Hi, I'm Moji Alawodeyal from the Feminist Buzzkills Live Pod, the only podcast that helps you navigate the news in this post pro anti-abortion hellscape. Each week with co-hosts Marie Khan and Liz Winstead, we dissect all the news from that sketchy intersection of abortion and misogyny with providers and activists working on the ground. The cherry on top is we have amazing comedy guests who help us laugh through the rage. Feminist Buzz Kills Live drops Fridays wherever you pod. Listen and subscribe, because when BS is popping, we pop off. Just in and so good. Thousands of summer deals at your Nordstrom Rack Store. Save big on the season's best new arrivals. From Free People, Adidas, Kurt Geiger London, Steve Madden, and more. Starting at just $30. Seriously. So, rack your look for summer. Score great brands and great prices at Nordstrom Rack today. Hurry in and get first dibs on the sun-ready styles you want. From just $30 at your Nordstrom Rack Store. What will you find? M-S-W Media. Hello and welcome to the Daily Beans for Thursday, June 15th, 2023. Today, the Fulton County District Attorney says the Trump indictment will not impact her case. The House Republicans have failed to censure and fine Adam Schiff. Democrats meet with anti-Trump conservatives to fight the No Labels Party. PGA Commissioner Monahan steps down for medical reasons. And Lindsey Graham is freaking the fuck out. I'm Allison Gill. And I'm Dana Goldberg. You know, Dana, it's not too often we put an F-bomb right in the intro, but it just had to happen today. I also love the thought of Lindsey Graham freaking the fuck out because he <laughs> deserves to freak the fuck out. And I'm going to say it as many times as I can before we hit the hot notes. <laughs> <laughs> so um, a little bit later in the show, I'm going to be talking with the communications director of Netroots Nation. Her name is Mary Rickles. I just found out, Dana, I'll be hosting a panel on Republican accountability and justice with Renato Mariotti, former federal prosecutor. And Victor Xi will be joining us. Oh, I- Yeah, I mean, Gen Z on the front (laughs) fucking lines. Victor's incredible. He is. And I think Jill Wine Banks might pop in as well. So fabulous. Yeah. So all the information on Netroots Nation, which is July 13th through the 15th, is going to be later in the show as I talk with Mary Rickles. Now, House MAGA caucus votes today were not enough to censure Adam Schiff. They wanted to censure him and fine him $16 million, but that vote failed today. Some uh, Republicans <laughs> joined the Democrats. By the way, everyone's asking, the, who are the five Democrats who voted present? They did so because they're on the House Ethics Committee and they're supposed to vote present on ethics things. So uh, it's, it's sort of like a recusal, but not a recusal. Yeah, imagine that, doing the ethical thing and being on the House Ethics Committee. Go Democrats. And also, again, I wanted to remind everybody we're having a mega justice celebration Zoom happy hour this Friday for patrons at 4 p.m. Pacific, 7 Eastern with uh, Andy McCabe's going to drop in. Pete Strzok's going to drop in. It's going to be Jack, The Daily Beans and Clean Up on L45. So we'll all be there. Amazing. So I hope you join us. If you want to become a patron, get these episodes ad free, get, you know, pre-sale tickets, VIP meet and greet stuff, uh, you know, when I'm out on the road or, you know, invitations to our I think they're bi-monthly. Every two weeks, we have a a Zoom happy hour where we have cocktails and mocktails and you can ask me any questions. So again, patreon.com slash Muller She Wrote. All right, we have a lot of news to get to today. Let's hit the hot notes. Hot notes. All right, from Bill Rankin at the Atlanta Journal-Constitution. And again, if you aren't subscribed to this paper, it's really, really great. And it's going to come in really handy when Fonnie Willis announces her stuff in August. Fulton County is pushing forward with its criminal probe of Donald Trump and his allies, despite more than three dozen new criminal counts being brought this week against the former president by Jack Smith, special counsel, U.S. Department of Justice. Quote, the federal indictments will not have any impact on the Fulton County election investigation. That's what the district attorney's office said in a statement on Wednesday. The status of the long-running Georgia probe came under scrutiny after New York Attorney General Letitia James said in an interview on Monday that state-led cases against Trump would have to be put on hold until the DOJ's classified documents case plays out. Now, Tish James, whose office is conducting a civil investigation of Trump's alleged financial fraud, said not only her case could be delayed, she also specifically mentioned the indictment brought by the Manhattan DA Alvin Bragg against Donald Trump for the Stormy Daniels stuff, falsifying business records as well as the expected indictment to be obtained by Fulton County District Attorney Fonnie Willis this August. Quote, 
So in all likelihood, I believe that my case, as well as D.A. Bragg and the Georgia case, will unfortunately have to be adjourned pending the outcome of the federal case. That's what James said during a live taping of the Pod Save America podcast. Quote, so it all depends on the scheduling of this particular case. Willis is expected to announce her indictments in August in her criminal inquiry, probably racketeering, of alleged meddling in Georgia's 2020 election. She has strongly suggested that she will charge Trump. Trump was arraigned Tuesday in federal court in Miami on 37 criminal counts, as we know, alleging he took classified papers with him from the White House and then obstructed the <laughs> trying to hand them back. And also, so these are violations under the Espionage Act, obstruction of justice, 1512 and 1519. And then there's also a couple of false statement 1001 charges. Pete Scandalakis, director of the Prosecuting Attorney's Council of Georgia, said when the federal indictment was announced, he had asked his staff to research this issue, this very issue. Quote, then they know of no law that gives federal government the ability to go first. That's what he said. They will both go forward. One exception would be if the federal government had a defendant in custody and refused to release that person for state prosecution. But that doesn't apply here because Trump was released Tuesday on personal recognizance. <laughs> Another exception would be for an agreement to be reached by federal and state prosecutors to allow one case to go forward and the other to wait. And that apparently hasn't happened either. However, I have to say the Georgia court is very booked and packed and slow. And she announces in August it might be after the election that she has her trial. I don't know. But if he's indicted in D.C. on January 6th charges, either before Fonnie Willis or shortly after Fonnie Willis announces her charges, I'm pretty sure that that trial would happen before Fonnie Willis's regardless. Mm. So we'll end up seeing what happens. But that she she's definitely pushing back on what Tish James said on Pod Save America. All right. Thank you, A.G. Oh, I love when there's stories about Lindsay. All right. This is from Travis Geddes at Raw Stories. Lindsey Graham warned that Republicans wouldn't accept an indictment of Donald Trump on charges related to January 6th insurrection. Graham gave an impassioned speech hours after Trump supporters stormed into the U.S. Capitol to prevent the certification of Joe Biden's election win, saying, and I quote, count me out of efforts to keep him in the White House. But he since changed his tune, as he often does. The South Carolina Republican told CNN that the former president shouldn't be prosecuted for his role in the insurrection. And this is what he said. If the special counsel indicts President Trump in Washington, D.C. for anything related to January 6th, that will be considered a major outrage by Republicans because you could convict any Republican of anything in Washington, D.C. <laughs> wow. That sounds to me like an admission that most Republicans have broken the law in Washington, <laughs> D.C. That whole, if they come for me, they could come for you. Yeah, if you stole classified documents or staged a coup, sure. Yeah, that's how it works. And Lindsey Graham finished up by saying, I fear that's where this is going as sort of an insurance policy. <sighs> now, whenever Lindsey comes to the defense of Donald Trump after saying that if we elected him, we're going to get what we deserve and basically it's going to destroy the country. Something's going down here. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And I have to wonder how McCain, by the way, a war hero. Yeah. Who dealt a lot afterwards with intelligence uh, in his in his many, many jobs in the government. This is his old best friend. Like he's spinning in his grave right now because what Donald Trump did, and I know I know I'm talking about the document stuff with the threats to national security and the military and all that stuff, but January 6th as well, disrupting the peaceful transfer of power. And, it, you know, it makes me wonder, Lindsey gets awfully upset when he could be in trouble. I remember him grilling somebody from the FBI saying, wait, did you record my conversations with foreign people? Do you have those? I need to know, you know, and, and the answer was basically Lindsey we record conversations of bad foreign enemies. If you're on the phone with them, yeah, we're going to have your stuff. Lindsey Graham, whenever it's either him or someone he either has a crush on or he cares for or what have you. But I remember whenever Lindsey Graham gets very upset, it sounds like he's auditioning for a part in The Crucible. He's always like very dramatic and he's giving yes. his diatribe or whatever, even in the Kavanaugh hearings. I remember when Kavanaugh was crying for the third time and he was like, I like beer, OK, I like beer. And Lindsey Graham stood up in the room and was like, I have never. And you're like, all right, Leslie Jordan, sit down. Like, we've had enough of you. We've had enough. I know. It's like back of the hand on the forehead. I oh. need my fainting couch and smelling salts. He's just oh, yeah. being overly dramatic here. But to to seriously, after all this, still stand on the side of Donald Trump is just beyond It's mind blowing to me. I don't get it. I don't get it. 
Yeah. All right. Next up. This is very interesting from Michael Shear at The Washington Post. Top Democratic strategists, including current advisors to Biden and former U.S. senators, met last week with former Republicans who opposed Donald Trump at the offices of a downtown D.C. think tank. Their mission is to figure out how to best subvert a potential third party presidential bid by the group No Labels, an effort they all agreed risked undermining Biden's reelection campaign and reelecting former President Trump to the White House. The broad show of force at the off the record gathering with about 40 people in the room and others appearing on Zoom on the anniversary of D-Day was the latest sign of a growing concern in some political circles about no labels effort to get ballot access to challenge major party candidates next year. Attendees included former White House chief of staff Ron Klain, big guns, Democratic National Committee senior advisor Cedric Richman, Stephanie Cutter, a former campaign advisor to Barack Obama, who has worked with the Biden team. They were joined by former senators like Doug Jones, Heidi Heitkamp, Claire McCaskill, along with representatives of the anti-Trump Lincoln Project, former Weekly Standard publisher Bill Kristol and Lucy Caldwell, a former Republican consultant who now advises the Independent Forward Party, according to people present at the event who spoke on the condition of anonymity because it's a private event. But I'm telling you all about it now. Quote, I see a group under a catchy slogan that is misleading at best saying they have the country's best interest at heart when the exercise will do nothing but elect Donald Trump. That's Richmond, who, like Ron Klain and Caldwell, told The Washington Post that they attended in their personal capacities. Quote, I'm encouraged that a lot of people share this concern that this effort is dangerous. Now, no labels. Dana is a nonprofit group. They don't have to disclose their donors. Donald Trump, (coughs) Save America PAC, NRA. It's been working to qualify a new party for the same name, no labels, for state ballots in 2024 that could be used by an independent bipartisan presidential ticket in case the major parties nominate unacceptable candidates, unacceptables in quotes. The group's leaders have said they view Trump as unacceptable, while telling others they would not move forward if Florida Governor Ron DeSantis wins the GOP nomination. The group has declined to say definitively that it views Biden as unacceptable. That's the no labels group. And you'll see a lot of trolls and bots coming out with Dem exit and we can't have Biden again. It's all funded by this fucking dark money. You guys don't people listening know what's happening. But many Democratic strategists fear the effort will move forward if Biden and Trump are the nominees. The Arizona Democratic Party has sued to kick no labels off the ballot in that state, alleging that its application was deficient. Maine Secretary of State Shanna Bellows recently sent a letter to more than 6,000 people who had enrolled in the No Labels Party in her state, notifying them of concerns that they may have been tricked into signing what they thought was a petition when, in fact, they were changing their party affiliation. Whoa. So they're using fucking trickery, shady trickery. So you know this is funded by the right. No Labels fired back at Bellows on Tuesday with a letter asking for the evidence that prompted her to target the voters individually who had signed documents, not who had signed to join the party or not, just sign documents. A no labels attorney from Marcus Clegg, which is a firm based in Portland, Maine, alleged that Bellows' actions potentially had a chilling effect on voters. In a clear suggestion of potential litigation, the letter cited Supreme Court precedent that says it's illegal to discriminate against new or small political parties. If you're funded by one of the big ones, though, are you really a new or small political party? People who attended the June 6th meeting, this private one, described presentations from recent polling and focus groups that suggested no labels could draw more support from Biden than Trump in a hypothetical three-way matchup. They said attendees discussed efforts to put pressure on no labels donors to educate potential no labels presidential candidates about the dangers of the effort that would result in Trump's election. They also spoke about raising more money to counter the effort, increasing outreach to members of Congress who are affiliated with the Bipartisan Problem Solvers Caucus, which was founded with the help of No Labels. Among those present or connected by Zoom was Jim Messina. That's Obama 2012 campaign manager. Former Howard Dean 2004 campaign manager Joe Trippi. Democratic strategist Antoine Seawright. Investing in U.S. co-founder Dimitri Melhorn. And Lincoln Project co-founder Reed Galen, who previously worked as a Republican strategist. Now, Hilltop Public Solutions partner Patrick Dillon, a former Obama White House deputy political director who's married to the White House deputy chief of staff, Jen O'Malley Dillon, was also there, according to the people. All right. I sure hope that they can thwart this whole thing, because what a mess that would be. Hmm. And we've got more stories on this Live PGA connection. And this is from Alan Blinder at The Times. The PGA Tour said Tuesday night that Jay Monahan, its commissioner, as we've been talking about him for a really long time, was, and I quote, recuperating from a medical situation and that two of its other executives would oversee the tour's day-to-day operations for the time being. 
Well, the tour's four-sentence statement, four sentences, came one week after Monaghan, who's 53, announced that the tour had reached a partnership deal with Saudi Arabia. Their sovereign wealth fund, which bankrolled the Live Golf League, and that has clashed with Monaghan's circuit for more than a year. Monaghan, the tour's commissioner since 2017, was one of the lead negotiators during the secret talks, which led to an agreement that has caused a furor among players, outrage on Capitol Hill, and the prospect that the Justice Department will seek to block the arrangement, and it has pissed AG and IF <laughs> to, to, to no end. Mm -hmm. Now, facing a crush of opposition to the deal, he has spent recent days crafting a response, including a session with players he called Heated, a contentious news conference, a town hall meeting with tour employees in Ponte Verde Beach, Florida, an appointed letter to lawmakers in Washington. So all of those things have happened just in this last week. The statement attributed to Monaghan and the tour's board did not elaborate on the commissioner's condition, but said that the board, and I quote, fully supports Jay and appreciates everyone respecting his privacy. Huh. Convenient. I hope he's okay. <laughs> but I do. Convenient. Yeah, I hope he's okay. I hope yeah. he's okay. But convenient. The tour did not give a timeline for Monaghan's return and said that Ron Price, the circuit's chief operating officer, and Tyler Dennis, the president of PGA Tour, they're going to take charge in the interim. And this is another quote. Our thoughts are with Jay and his family during his absence, and we wish him a speedy recovery. That was from Price and Dennis. That's what they say in a joint statement. Went on to say, we have a strong and experienced leadership team in place, and our priority is to support our players and continue the work underway to further lead the PGA Tour and golf's future. Well, Monaghan has worked for the tour since 2008, with Stint's its chief marketing officer, and as executive director of the Players' Championship. Under the deal that Monaghan helped broker this spring, after he spent months condemning the rush of Saudi cash into men's professional golf, by the way, the money-making components of the PGA Tour, Live Golf, and DP World Tour, formerly the European Tour, are to be housed in a new company. Monaghan is expected to be chief executive, and Yasir al Ramayan, the governor of the Saudi Wealth Fund, is in line for its chairmanship. Now, Monaghan and his lieutenants have insisted that the company's structure, which allows for extensive Saudi investment, by the way, will give the PGA Tour ultimate authority over the most elite tiers of professional golf. But Al Ramayan, his role and the potential for significant infusions of Saudi cash have helped stir doubts about the extent of Monaghan's authority. Now, it's not clear when the deal is going to close, but the agreement has been the subject of intense discussion and skepticism among players mm -hmm. at the U.S. Open. And if, for those of you that don't know, that's a major tournament scheduled to begin Thursday at the Los Angeles Country Club. In a statement on Wednesday morning, the Saudi Wealth Fund said it was committed to working closely with the PGA leadership and board to advance our previously announced transaction to invest significantly in the growth of, for, of golf for the benefit of players, fans, and the expansion of the game around the world. So mm. I just, I understand this is a money deal. It just is fucking shady and, the, yeah. and, and morally corrupt. It's awful. Yeah. And something that the Times fails to mention here, Senator Blumenthal, just yesterday we talked about, launched a, an investigation into this merger. And we knew that a couple months ago, Jack Smith, special counsel investigating Donald Trump, also subpoenaed people for documents concerning the Live Golf Tournament. So this timing, uh, and again, I hope he's fine. I hope he'll be okay if he's sick. But this is very interesting timing. That's all I have to say about that. I agree with you. All right, everybody, we'll be right back with Mary Rickles. She's the communications director of Netroots Nation. I'll be there July 13th through the 15th, and we're going to talk all about it. Stick around. We'll be right back. After these messages, we'll be right You voted. I did. You protested. Again. You postcarded. So many Sundays. You posted on social media. Got some likes. And you're still reeling from all the terrible news. Yeah, but what else can I do? I'm Kelly. I'm Lila. And we're going to help you figure that out. Each week, we'll interview people on the front lines of political action about the things they actually did to take action what got them started, who helped them along the way, and what they'd do differently if they had it to do all over again. And in the process, we'll give you concrete advice about how to take the leap from freaking out on Twitter to making a difference. Follow What Can I Do wherever you listen to podcasts or tune in on whatcanidopodcast.com. Jay. 
just in and so good. Thousands of summer deals at your Nordstrom Rack Store. Save big on the season's best new arrivals. From Free People, Adidas, Kurt Geiger London, Steve Madden and more. Starting at just $30. Seriously. So, rack your look for summer. Score great brands and great prices at Nordstrom Rack today. Hurry in and get first dibs on the sun-ready styles you want. From just $30 at your Nordstrom Rack Store. What will you find? The issues of the day are really complicated. Everybody loves a good hot take, but really understanding an issue takes some digging. I'm Asha Rangappa. I teach national security law at Yale University. I'm a former FBI special agent, and I'm a legal and national security analyst. And I'm Renato Mariotti. I'm a former federal prosecutor, a practicing lawyer, and a legal analyst. And we're here to help you understand topics that can't be boiled down to a soundbite or a tweet. Join us each week as we dig deep into pressing legal topics. Listen to It's Complicated anywhere you get your podcasts and check out our YouTube channel. Hey, everybody. Welcome back. So, you know, I've been talking a lot about going to Netroots Nation, which is happening in Chicago in July. It's July 13th through 15th. I will be there. And to discuss what Netroots Nation is and what's going to be going on that week is the communications and political director. It's Mary Rickles. Hi, Mary. Welcome. Hi. Thanks. Nice to see you. Yeah, it's good to see you. It's good to put a face to the name. I know we've been going back and forth, coordinating a lot of dates and events and things like that with with Netroots. Can you talk a little bit about what Netroots Nation is and what we can expect this year. Yeah. So if you're not familiar with Netroots Nation, we host the largest annual conference for progressives in the country. We go to a different city every year because we want to highlight local organizing in the city that we're in. And so we're delighted to be in Chicago, um, you know, coming up next month. But really, like Netroots is three days of kind of drinking from a political fire hose. Like we have a lot of content to choose from, a lot of really amazing speakers, lots of networking opportunities, lots of fun social events. We have films, caucuses, just lots going on. So there's really something for everyone who might attend. And it's really like someone last year told me it felt like progressive summer camp. (laughs) Well, what a cool idea, too, because there are there are many other political conventions that I have attended, but then I have to sit through panels of, you know, people on the far right and and Republicans or, you know, you have to run into people that you would run into CPAC that you don't necessarily, you know, want to get information from. But the thing I love about Netroots is it's dedicated totally to progressive politics. And so I think that that makes it, in my view, not only a more informative place, but also, you know, or a place where you can get like calls to action and things that you can do Mm -hmm. as a progressive activist. But it's also just a safer environment to me. And Mm -hmm. I just feel more at home. I feel like I'm around my people. And, you know, I love Chicago when I go on tour. Like it's one of my favorite cities to be in. So I was very, very excited to hear it's going to be in Chicago this year. So who can we expect to see? Because, you know, you you say you have like panels. It's it's almost like Comic-Con, but for for, for left-wing politics. Talk yeah. about some of the folks that are going to be there this year besides me. Yeah. So there is some amazing content. We've got about 80 panels happening on every topic imaginable from reproductive justice to police reform to climate change. We've got about 60 something training sessions. So those are skills-based sessions where you can go learn how to make your website more effective, or you can go learn how to be a better, uh, better on camera dealing with the media, or you can learn, you know, how to set up an SMS program for your organization. So really great skills-based conversations. We also have kind of peppered in there, caucuses, films, social events. And then we have one keynote each day as well. And I can, I'll tell you a little about, about who's on tap there, but you know, that's kind of the content side. And That's amazing. You can find really amazing content at lots of conferences. But I think what really sets Netroots apart is that it is a community space. We have folks, probably about, you know, half or more of the folks who come work in politics. They work for their local, you know, a local nonprofit. They work for a labor union. Um, You know, they work for a national uh, progressive advocacy organization. Maybe they work on a campaign. 
But we have a good chunk of people too, who are just passionate, progressive activists who come just to be around the excitement. They come for the inspiration. They come to meet people. A lot of us, you know, in the political space now work from home. And so it's really great to be able to connect, to go to a space where, you know, these are your people. You can get to know people from every state. We have people attend from every state every year. And we actually have a pretty good international contingent of folks who come every year too. So getting the opportunity to to meet people from all over, we have had people tell us that they got the inspiration to start their organization at Networks Nation. We have people who have decided to run for office because they got inspired at Networks Nation or they went to a training about running for office. Um, There's a woman in Montana who's um, in the Montana state legislature now for quite a few years who, you know, says she she started her political journey because of her experience in Netroots like 12, 13 years ago. I've actually had people tell me they even, you know, met their partner, their spouse at Netroots Nation. Hmm. So it's just a great place to come, get connected to other people, you know, who are working on similar issues. A lot of collaborations form. I love to just walk down the hallway and hear what people are talking about. Because you hear people saying, oh, well, my organization is going to be launching this campaign and we'd love to get some more allies, you know, on board as partners. And it, it's just really cool to hear those conversations of like organizing people, getting energized and, and getting connected. Yeah. And that's the most amazing part for me, right, is that networking part and meeting other people because progressives in general are just the most like pro-collaborative folks that you know that I've ever met like oh you've got a, oh you've got this we can come together and we can do this and you know the net this is the answer netroots is the answer for me to the right wing who has been so good at sort of putting these events together they have their prayer breakfasts they have their freedom fests they have their am fests they have their cpac <laughs> and we're always like what are we going to do about this on the left we have to have an answer for this on the left we have to have a place where we can all meet up and collaborate and have ideas mm-hmm. and and train and figure out action plans, calls to action. And that is what, to me, the you know, one of the reasons that I'm so excited to be going to, to Netroots this year is, is for that opportunity, right? Mm-hmm. To network and meet people and, you know, not just, you know, have a big, cool party with a lot of rad people, but, you know, to make those connections. It's mm-hmm. so very important. Yeah. Another thing I think that that I really love about Netroots is that It truly is a place to hear from like the next generation of leaders. Maybe 15 years ago, we had Stacey Abrams speak before she was really on the national radar. We had John Fetterman speak back in 09, I think, you know, when he was mayor and and now he's a senator. So it's cool to see that. It's cool to be able to hear someone at a level and and be like, wow, I can tell that person is going to do great things. And the other thing that a lot of people comment on after Netroots or during the conference is like, oh, wow, I saw a senator just walking down the hallway and I got to say hi. Or, oh, I met this, you know, candidate that I really love. You know, folks, elected officials and candidates who come to Netroots Nation come because they want to just engage. You know, it's not just a speaking opportunity for them. They want to actually be able to go to the exhibit hall and go do an interview on Radio Row and um, and do things like that where they can actually like get to know people and, you know, in various states and and who are working on on different issues. Speaking of some of those keynotes, who do you have lined up this year? Can you tell us? Yeah. So we have about 10 members of Congress confirmed right now. Maxwell Frost, Summer Lee, Greg Kazar, Delia Ramirez, Pramila Jayapal, Barbara Lee, Ilhan Omar. I'm probably forgetting some people, <laughs> but we've got, I think it's 10, 10 members of Congress confirmed at the moment. Plus some other, like I said, not just federal level folks. We've got uh, Justin Jones and Justin Pearson coming from Tennessee, who Excellent. I'm very excited to hear from. Mayor Brandon Johnson will be opening up our keynote, and he's just a phenomenal speaker and organizer. So I think people will be really delighted to hear from him. We have Attorney General Keith Ellison. Illinois' Attorney General will be there. We have, I think, four secretaries of state from different states who are going to be coming uh, to talk about voting rights. And then we have like movement leaders too, Maurice Mitchell from Working Families Party and Marcos Melitzas from Daily Coast and Randy Weigarten from AFT, Kimberly Crenshaw, the brilliant writer, Tim Wise, just some really amazing people who are, you know, I think have been, you know, I hate this word, but thought leaders and, you know, movement leaders for a really long time. 
Yeah. And so much to learn from all of them. And so it's just going to be uh, truly incredible. So could you let everybody know where they can get more information on Netroots Nation, where they can get tickets, where they can sign up uh, and, and, you know, look at the schedules, let everybody know where they can do that. Yes, it's all at netrootsnation.org. You can check out the overview schedule where you can see kind of the structure of each day. We have a searchable agenda where you can search by topic or by day. And then we also, that's also where you can get tickets. We offer a couple of different price levels. We have student level tickets. We have an activist and an organization rate ticket. That is totally uh, just, we trust our community to, to purchase at the rate they're able to, knowing that you know, every paid registration helps offset the cost of a scholarship that we're able to give out. We don't ever want, you know, price to keep someone from not being able to attend. So we do also prioritize giving out scholarships to folks who can't afford it. So there is a link on our website as well to apply for a scholarship if you need that. Um, we'd love to, to have you regardless. So all the information is at netroutsnation.org. That is so awesome. Uh, thank you so much. I appreciate your time today. And I look forward to, to seeing you in Chicago. It's, again, I can't it's, wait to meet you in person. It's July 13th through the 15th, netrootsnation.org. Everybody check it out. Mary Rickles, thanks so much. Thanks. Everybody stick around. We'll be right back with the good news. Hi, I'm Frances Callier. And I'm Angela V. Shelton. And we're Frangela. You know what you need in your life? Hmm. The Final Word Podcast. Yes, you do. That's right. It is the final word on all things political and pop cultural. Where we make real news real funny. Where we inspire you so you can hashtag resist. Subscribe and get a new episode of The Final Word Podcast each week. It's the news we think you need to hear. That's right. We think you need to hear it. Okay. Yeah, it's what we say so. That's right. And because all we do is give, every Thursday you can listen to our hysterical podcast, Idiot of the Week. We round up the stupid because you know what? Somebody has to. Okay. All we do is give. Price drop. It's time to shop at Nordstrom Rack. Get to your rack store today for first dibs on new markdowns. Now score even more, up to 70% off. Brands everyone loves at Nordstrom Rack. Find genius deals on easy dresses, denim, tops, sneakers, and more. Plus, tons of must-haves for the family and home. So shop your Nordstrom Rack store today and save up to 70% on so many new markdowns. But hurry, deals this great won't last long. How did we get here? A moment when the fringe has overrun the mainstream. When conspiracy theorists roam the halls of Congress. When politics have turned to violence in the streets. I'm Garrett Graff. On my podcast, Long Shadow, I'm exploring the decades-long rise of the modern far-right movement and the governmental failures that fueled its fire. How the movement was sparked by a deadly fiasco at Waco, Texas. This fire is racing out of control, black smoke. Fed by decades of conspiratorial thinking. Stop the new world! and ultimately led to a riot on the steps of the U.S. Capitol. How did America get the far right so wrong? And what will it take now to get it right? From Long Lead and Campside Media, it's Long Shadow, Rise of the American Far Right. Everybody, welcome back. It's time for the good news. Good news. And if you have any good news, confessions, corrections, if you want to play what the mutt, or if you have new and interesting swear words, I always love to hear those. <laughs> As wanna, do I. <laughs> you want to send in baby pictures for Dana, frog orgies for me. Yes, please. Shout out to somebody you love. Shout out to a small business, your small business, or one in your community that you want to support. Uh, and if you don't have pod pet tax to pay, you can send us an adoptable pet in your area and we'll see if we can help that baby get adopted. Uh, so whatever you want to send to us at all, you can do so by going to dailybeanspod.com and clicking on contact. Next up from, next up, what am I talking about? We're just going to start with one. Okay. And then we'll keep on moving. Yeah, I, this is just an extension of yesterday's good news. <laughs> First up, Lori, pronouns she and her. Hello, amazing humans. Thanks for bringing us the news with snark and a bit of humor each day. For the good news, I wanted to tell you about the camp my 16-year-old is at this week and next, Camp Indigo Point. 
Camp Indigo Point takes place at a summer camp outside Benton, Illinois. Benton is in southern Illinois, really southern Illinois. (laughs) We're six hours or so south of Chicago and two and a half hours north of Nashville. Anyway, Camp Indigo Point is for LGBTQIA plus kids just to be themselves and enjoy summer camp. Amazing. I know. I love this. All of the staff identify as LGBTQIA+, and the pictures shared in the parents' Facebook group each night are truly full of joy. So many of these kids live with so much hate around them every day, in spite of having supportive families. And for two weeks each summer, they get to just be kids. Camp Indigo Point is always looking for donations to help cover the cost of the camp for families who can't afford it. You can find out more on their website, campindigopoint.org. I can't share pictures from the camp, but just imagine beautiful kids and teens being able to just be and play and you'll be close. For pet tax, I'm attaching a picture of our puppy, Molly. She's eight and a half years old and I'll put her breed below. Molly's very sweet and protective and takes her job of alerting us to oxygen molecules crossing our property (laughs) line very seriously. In this picture, she's waiting by the front door for her people to come home. Both of our kids have been away at school this year, one in college and one at boarding school for high school. And Molly gets very sad when they're away. Thank you again. Listening to you all on my drive to work each day helps me get going, and I do appreciate it. Molly's mom, oh, well, there's the answers. Hey, production team, you're supposed to put the answers below the photo. Okay, but this dog is, uh, mom was full-blooded Great Pyrenees. Dad, not sure, but we think German Shepherd or, you know, Australian Shepherd. I would just like to say if AG and I had gotten what the mutt, we would have failed miserably. Would you have ever said this was a Great Pyrenees German Shepherd mix? Yes, I was so ready to say. Lies. Lies, everyone. <laughs> Lies. <laughs> you got me. Oh, my God. Oh, we're going to get another one. Oh, we're going to test next year. Okay, this is not a what the mutt. I got excited. This is from M.L. Kennedy, mostly he. I really love that pronoun description. Me Hi, too. I'm a new listener this week. And I was looking for a podcast to cover the latest Trump indictment and found you all. I used to listen to a legal podcast for this sort of thing. But um, anyways... <laughs> <laughs> You you should check out Jack, too. Uh, We're we're not as, you know, Andy doesn't drop F-bombs as much as Dana does, but it's a pretty good show. As Dana does. I just got thrown under the. I'm okay with that. No, you got elevated onto a pedestal (laughs) for your amazing F-bomb usage. Thank you. So welcome to your pedestal. And as ML continues. Yep. I thought I'd send a dog pic payment. We rescued him eight years ago and, we, and was told he was a Yorkie mix, except he is triple the size of a Yorkie and massive 15 pounds. We DNA tested him last year. And OK, so if he's not a Yorkie mix, I'm that little nub tail. He's so cute. I mean, he's got maybe a, some terrier in there. I would say terrier, but also schnauzer. I don't know. That's a, that. Fifteen pounds would be a really big Yorkie. <laughs> That's true. He's got a little Ooh. fat body. I feel like there might be some like pug in there or something. No offense Most to the pugs out there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, like pugs around the world are going. What the fuck, Dan? Yeah, I don't have a fat body, asshole. Let's see, let's what see. do we have? A hundred percent Yorkie. <laughs> oh my god, that was a trick. <laughs> we were tricked on what the mutt. <laughs> oh my god. Nice you job, just, ML Kennedy, because we were like, there's no way it's a Yorkie. You're like, no, it's a fat Yorkie. Okay, cool. You just have a giant Yorkie. Oh, I'm sorry, so big cute. bone. This is a, oh, it's a big bone Yorkie. Yes, rotund. I am also a big boned Yorkie. As am I, my friend. Next up from Lisa, <laughs> pronoun she and her, ladies of the beans. Happy Pride Month. Happy Pride Month to you. Kitchen table veteran listener registered trademark here. Here are some of the items I am making as prizes for a youth pride picnic with LGBTQ saves. Sorry, I can't give more details because privacy and, well, asshole protesters. I hear you. Mm-hmm. We have pride pillowcases, purses, key rings, stickers, and other goodies for the kids. Oh, and mom hugs. Yes. Lots of mom hugs. I like to think of myself as an LGBTQ ally, but always feel there's more to do to earn that title. Pod Pet Tax, copyright, is another photo of Benny. He recently had a softball-sized fatty tumor removed from his little 12-pound body. See before Aww. picture. And he's doing great. Oh, Lisa, I understand that. I had a I had a big cat, like a 25-pound cat that had a giant softball-sized tumor. Holy cow. Oh, baby. That is a massive tumor. Oh, and look oh. at oh, his little cone head. Oh, cone of shame. Look it's at the stuff right. she made. I know. <gasps> that is incredible. 
Well, that's beautiful. That's it so cool, beautiful. Lisa. There's so many talented listeners. I love when you all write in about your talents and hobbies and small businesses. It makes me super happy. Me too. All right. This is from T. Wright, pronounced she, her. Every morning when I hear frog orgies on your podcast, <laughs> I make a mental note to send you this photo. And then I forget, not today. This was snapped inside my pool screening. Obviously, I did not wish to disturb them and their moment of bliss. <laughs> Thank you for all you guys do. And now we know that you will have this podcast for a long time as we move through all these <laughs> Trump crimes. Rejoice with me. Very truly yours, Teresa Wright. And yeah, these little salamanders. Look at the blissfulness of the one on the bottom or really fucking bored. Like, just get this over no, with. No, yeah. Or like the whole, uh, hey, you want to do it? All right, but you be on top. I'm tired. Yeah, I had, <laughs> I, had too, I had too much food and I can feel it moving around still, so... <laughs> I feel like that's what's happened here. Yeah. Thank you for that. Next up from David Camp to pronounce he and him. Greetings, Leguminati. I want to tell you about a community change project I'm doing in my highly segregated home of Rockingham County, North Carolina. I moved to the 15,000 person rural town of Eden, North Carolina, 11 years ago to take care of sick parents. My consulting firm specializing in race relations and DEI. I have mostly worked out of town and online. The current anti-DEI backlash that's diversity, equity, and inclusion, by the way, everybody, has made things difficult for my work, less in demand, even as it's increasingly necessary. I've begun to focus some of my attention to what I might do in my local community since I'm committed to staying here as long as my remaining parent, my World War II amputee veteran, 98-year-old dad, is above the ground. Last year, when conducting what I call bistro research, my grandiose internal code for talking to people in the overwhelmingly white bars in the county, Many folks told me that they didn't want to even think about Juneteenth because it was y'all's holiday, unquote. Even in the super Trumpy county, I thought we could do better than that. I persuaded the local arts council and a big church to have an event aimed at connecting Juneteenth Freedom Day to July 4th Independence Day. On June 24th, Eden is having our inaugural Freedom Fortnight Festival, which will be a consciously interracial, intergenerational cookout. Pre-registrants will enjoy both Americana, hot dogs, hamburgers, and french fries, and soul food, fried fish, fried chicken, collard greens, cornbread, patriotic songs like America the Beautiful and Lift Every Voice and Sing, storytelling about the county's noticeable but uneven racial progress, and of course, classic cookout activities like water balloon tosses and cornhole. Remember when we had lawn darts? Oh, Dana, dangerous things. Yes, I do. How did we get out of the 70s, man? Oh, my God. Seriously. We used to drink from hoses. We had long darts. There's a lot of shit going on. And look, we're doing just fine. Debatably. We didn't have car seats. We rode in the way back of the station wagon. We yes, didn't have we knee did. pads or helmets for our bicycles. And I crashed a lot. I don't know how we made it out. All right. Let's see. It has not been hard to get working and lower middle class people to sign up for the free meal. And the festival will get advanced coverage from the local NPR station. And it's been harder than I thought to get local folks with money to donate to the budget for the festival. Even though everyone agrees the county is too segregated and the event is a good attempt at productive disruption of that, my hope is that the Beans listeners will look up Freedom Fortnite Festival on Eventbrite and attend or pitch in. Thanks for all you do to keep people informed, inspired, and amused enough to create change. I will continue to listen to y'all every day during my warm-up to my morning workout. Keep up the fight, beans, queens, and I will report back after all the patriotic electric sliding is over. <laughs> oh, my God. Everybody, Freedom Fortnite Festival on Eventbrite. Donate, donate, donate. Sounds fun. What a cool, I know. I want to go and go. Ah, uh, how, what a, what a great idea. I, I'm very sad to learn that the right wing establishment coming after DEI is, you know, making your job like making your what the work you do be be less in demand yeah like that's I the mean, chilling effect they want you know yeah, that's absolutely terrible. i agree but i love that you're doing what you can david thank you for sending this in again everybody that is the freedom Fortnite festival on Eventbrite. okay that's our good news today dana you're going to be out all weekend i'll be i'll be here tomorrow to hold down the fort but, uh, and you know, we're going to have a really big episode of the Jack podcast this weekend. Oh, it's and... going to be so good. Everyone tune in. If you're not a patron, make sure that you become one. Although most of the Jack episodes, I believe are free. Yes. Oh, well, they're all free, but you can get them ad free. And then yep. you can also join us on the big, huge fucking justice celebration Zoom call this Friday, 4 p.m. So Pacific. Good. 
7 p.m. Eastern, me, Andy McCabe, Pete Strzok. It's going to be super fun. You can ask questions or just hang out and listen to other people ask questions. And then once it's done, we'll put out the recording of it to the patrons. So if you can't make it, you still get to see it if you're a patron. All right. Do you have any final thoughts before we get out here for the weekend, my friend? Just sending everyone love. It's been a great week. And um, I'm just I'm just really grateful this for this community. I, I am. So thank you to all the listeners out there. It is a really, really wonderful community. There's going to be a very wonderful uh, Juneteenth concert next week at the White House. If anybody's in D.C. and you want to attend, you can look up information on that. It's going to be super outstanding. I know my friend Harry Dunn was telling me all about it. He's going to be there. He's invited. So I think uh, everybody should look forward to that celebration as well. And, and you know, pushing back on what the right wing has to say about it. Yeah, I just think it's, you know, you show the difference between these people. Uh, President Biden's having a celebration for the black community June 13th and our and the allies. And what happened, I believe it was last year, the year before uh, Trump had a um, um, in Tulsa, Oklahoma, mm-hmm. uh, where the massacre occurred on June on, on June 13th. So you see the difference between these two men. And I use men. Uh, loosely when it comes to Trump. That's for sure. Men's doing a lot of heavy lifting over there. Yeah, it is. All right, everybody have a wonderful weekend until well, as much as uh, what is his name? Walt Nada was with the boxes. (laughs) I will be back on the beans tomorrow. (laughs) So until then, please take care of yourselves. Take care of each other. Take care of the planet. Take care of your mental health. Vote blue over Q. And take someone with you, please. Please. I've been AG. And I've been DG. And them's the beans. The Daily Beans is written and executive produced by Allison Gill with additional research and reporting by Dana Goldberg. Sound design and editing is by Desiree McFarlane with art and web design by Joel Reeder with Moxie Design Studios. Music for The Daily Beans is written and performed by They Might Be Giants and the show is a proud member of the MSW Media Network, a collection of creator-owned podcasts dedicated to news, politics, and justice. For more information, please visit mswmedia.com. MSW Media. You voted. I did. You protested. Again. You postcarded. So many Sundays. You posted on social media. Got some likes. And you're still reeling from all the terrible news. Yeah, but what else can I do? I'm Kelly. I'm Lila. And we're going to help you figure that out. Each week, we'll interview people on the front lines of political action about the things they actually did to take action what got them started, who helped them along the way, and what they'd do differently if they had it to do all over again. And in the process, we'll give you concrete advice about how to take the leap from freaking out on Twitter to making a difference. Follow What Can I Do wherever you listen to podcasts or tune in on whatcanidopodcast.com. Hi, I'm Harry Littman, host of Talking Feds, a roundtable that brings together prominent figures from government law and journalism for a dynamic discussion of the most important topics of the day. Each Monday, I'm joined by a slate of Feds favorites and new voices to break down the headlines and give the insider's view of what's going on in Washington and beyond. Plus sidebars explaining important legal concepts read by your favorite celebrities. Find Talking Feds wherever you get your podcasts.